Hi everybody, Mature Simmer here. Welcome to another episode in the Non-Aviator Flight Sim series. So in this episode, I'm going to cover something uh, basic that can get very complex just depending on the type of aircraft you're talking about and so forth. And that is what's known as cold and dark start. What that means is you are in an airplane that is not on the runway because if you start on the runway, if you spawn into the runway, Microsoft Flight Simulator by default has the plane basically ready and configured and ready for takeoff. So if you're looking for the simplest way to jump in and start to try to fly, spawning on the runway is that method. There's really no need for me to do any kind of a video on that. There's really nothing to it. A cold and dark start is something here. I'm at Birmingham Airport, Kilo Bravo Hotel Mike, so Birmingham, Alabama in the U.S. So it's a smaller airport, and so I'm over here uh, probably where some GA aircraft might spawn. And as you can see, the cockpit is dark. Uh, we're in Birmingham, so it's kind of warm, so cold might not be the case, but the reference is in regards to are the electronics working along with cold and dark, so the, the engines aren't running. It's not, you know, there's, there's, there's nothing hot going on, and dark is, you know, your screens aren't light. So you can click on the yoke in most planes and get it to vanish, and that tends to be helpful. Sometimes the trigger point is hard to find, but basically look for the, the blinking yoke and you'll be fine. Some airplanes will just move the yoke, but most will allow a way for them to, to vanish. And again, you can bring it back just like that. All right, so as a non-aviator, again, what are you typically doing when you're starting a plane? And I can probably most easily explain it to you by narrowing things down because regardless of what the plane is you're going to need to do somewhat of the same things. How you do it in any given plane is going to be different because the controls are different. But in a very general way, it's still similar. So once you get familiar how to do it in a plane, a, a, you know, what you would call a standard plane, where most people probably aren't going to fly a plane without some sort of GPS or autopilot over any good distance. If you're going to do a bunch of little short flights, you know, 50 miles or less, yes, maybe you'll go up in your Cessna 152 with just basic instruments and fly that manually the whole way. That's certainly a wonderful thing to do, but I'm talking about most of the standard aircraft that you'll have where you have uh, you know, the personal flight display known as the PFD, which is bringing things up. And then, you you know, you might have an MFD, your different terms for a multiple flight display where you can, you can change what's on that screen and so forth. But you're basically going to need to get the aircraft out of the dark state, meaning you're going to have to give it some sort of power. Usually airplanes will have batteries. They may be plugged into ground power units or GPUs. That would be more for airliners or things like that, but there's usually some way to get basic power flowing to the system, to the systems in the plane, because otherwise you really can't do much. I mean, I can sit here and, you know, press buttons, but with no power, nothing happens. If you're going to be using an autopilot, you're then typically going to be getting your flight plan programmed into whatever system is needed to do it. You may be using navigation radios and just do things with frequencies. That's more complicated. I'm not going to get into that within, within this video. So for a non-aviator uh, like myself, I'd say it's actually simpler if you can get into what some would say would be a more complicated plane, which is one that has a flight computer that then allows you to put in a flight plan and so it knows where the waypoints are and so forth and you're not dealing with the frequencies directly in your nav radio and so forth. You're then going to get basically your system set up uh, of, of how you're going to have things configured to basically get ready to taxi the plane and move. 
So that may involve setting up your flaps. It may involve, again, getting your autopilot ready. Another big thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to start your engines. So that could involve making sure the fuel is flowing, things like that. And then obviously the actual sequence of starting the engines, which again can vary substantially from one plane to another. So we're going to use this Cessna Citation CJ-4 as our example aircraft for this lesson. You can usually find cold and dark checklists on the internet pretty easily. I would just suggest you search MSFS or Microsoft Flight Simulator. That's the typical abbreviation that's used. And then the airplane name and cold and dark checklist. That's the simplest way that I've been able to find things. And so once again, I'm not providing those. I'm not, this isn't really a tutorial per se. It's just going through the normal processes. What you'll typically do, and this may be out of sequence, because once you get familiar with an aircraft, and I've flown this one quite a bit, you kind of know the basics you need to do to get things out, to get the plane up and functional and off the ground. There may be things that a real pilot in the plane may do that I'm not doing. Again, I'm coming at this from a non-aviator standpoint and how it then is able to function appropriately within Flight Simulator. And that includes if you do something more substantial, like eventually decide to fly on VATSIM, because basically you just need to know how to set your transponder codes and so forth. This is not going to get into a lot of that at this point. I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. So again, first step, as I said, you need to get power to the plane. So you can blindly kind of look around. And so, you know, as the pilot, you know, most of your immediate controls are going to be here. And most planes will group things in some sort of a sequence. So you can see here, it's, this is labeled ice protection. So that's up here. You know, basically everything down here is that. You know, these controls all seem to be related to something. They're actually related to, to one of the displays. Um, you know, it's it, these controls basically control this display. These controls control this display. So it isn't incredibly difficult to get yourself situated in an aircraft once you kind of just apply some basic logic to it. You know, similarly, if you go down here, Exterior lights seems pretty obvious. You know, dimming. These are all controls to dim things. You know, you might not know what the abbreviations are, but that's the fun of the flight sim. You can get in and you can play with things. Obviously, when you're dealing with dimming in the cockpit, it might be best to spawn in or change the time in the sim to night so it's dark. Otherwise, you know, it's, it's harder to see things during the daytime. So as I look around, I'm looking for things, ah, electrical panel. We need power. Sounds like a logical place, and look at this, battery, on. And there we go. Now we're no longer in a dark state. Now one of the things that will happen on most planes is your, your caution lights, in essence, illuminate when you power things on. Uh, somewhat of a, a test, you could say. Sometimes the red warning light comes on. You just have to press them to reset. Again, pretty standard across all aircraft, other than very, very basic, you know, prop planes and things like that. You know, and at this point, we could turn our avionics on. You can see that now lights up another screen. And in some planes, depending how they're modeled, uh, the battery's not going to last forever. So you're going to want to do this relatively quickly again it's you're not going to have seconds you're going to have minutes but you know if you leave a, a Cessna sitting uh, a, a prop plane a Cessna prop plane sitting on the tarmac for a little while and the battery's not been very charged or something like it will eventually go dark and you won't be able to do anything without restarting it and respawning into the sim you know, once again, do you have to do these other things to go to cold or dark? No, but, you know, normally you're going to arm your emergency lights so that if something happens, you're going on. Again, uh, we talked about in the how a plane flies, we talked about the pitot tube. So, 
You want to keep that warm, so this is the ice protection, so in, in this plane I turn that on. But basically at this point now, you, you know, you've got everything on. And as I said, this, the second step is get your computer ready. So you can move your cameras around within Microsoft Flight Simulator with the control keys. So you can always just get into a plane and just cycle through, basically control 1 through 9, sometimes 1 through 0. So in the CJ4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0 doesn't do anything. The normal pilot mode, let's say I'm looking here, control spacebar will get you there and then the spacebar will lift you up and down a little bit. Again, that's standard in every plane. So once you learn about that, that's a good thing to, to have. So I know in this case, control three lets me look at my flight computer. So most flight computers, and I'm gonna have, a, have lessons on programming the flight computer and so forth, so I'm not gonna get into that, but most, you know, this is called the scratch pad at the bottom. So sometimes it'll give you information like it is here. It's telling me to initialize the position. So that, you know, tells the plane where it's at. Again, I know I'm going through things very quickly. You know, the goal is not to teach you how to do it, but you know, we're here at KBHM. And so you can see it's kind of going in the scratch pad and then I send it in using the buttons on the side. And let's say we were gonna fly to Charlotte. So I know that the airport code is that. And now you can see, you know, that's the benefit of a plane like this. The flight computer is intelligent enough, like it knows where things are in the world. And then I execute, and you know, you, you'll notice things are changing up here as I go through. And so, um, you know, I can say I'm departing on runway 24. I'm going to be arriving, uh, let's say ILS runway 36 left. I could pick some random star that's not normally what you do i'm just trying to get things set here for us again keep an eye up here as i do things so get rid of the discontinuity we execute and now i've got this purple line and that basically is showing me that i'm all set and then this is on the other end where i get to charlotte the way the cj4 is set up you know, this is where I am with the plane. This is ulti my ultimate destination. So I can kind of see that things look good there. You know, we do have a little bit of a problem here. So I fix things off camera because I, I just don't want to create more confusion for you. You're probably starting to get overwhelmed as it is. But basically, I've got things set up in the flight computer enough that I'm ready to go. And I know this because I can see speeds and altitudes and so forth. Again, I'll get into all those details in other videos to help you as a non-aviator get more familiar. Control spacebar gets me back. And so now I have my flight management computer set up enough that I could function. You know, now I'm going through doing a few other things, you know, and, and I'm seeing things because I know what I'm looking for so I'm seeing things that are going to have me do some, take some steps that you wouldn't know to take because you're not seeing the same situation I'm seeing. So we're going to set our altitude to some, some random number because we're not taking off here. In this video, we are just simply going ahead and, and getting the plane ready. And so, you know, you'll do other checks and so forth. My, my gear is down. Um, I'm going to want to set my flaps. I can, you know, do that multiple ways. So, you know, take off flaps would be that, that'd be a normal setting there. You know, my parking brake is, is here and set. So everything is good. And again, you'd normally be using whatever controls you're doing. I tend to fly uh, with an Xbox controller. So I've got a lot of things uh, mapped to that and set up appropriately. You, you need to get all that together, and again, not the con not the content of this video. Then the last thing you're doing is you're getting your engines going. So you know you're going to spin things up, and again, you need to know how to start your aircraft or be working from a checklist.
and then things get going. Obviously, if you're not hearing things in your aircraft, you know you've likely missed a step. All right, you know, we're going to get beacon lights on, nav lights, landing lights, taxi lights. Actually, taxi lights first. If it's dark, you might turn on a logo light. But, you know, it, it, these are the type of things you're, you're kind of looking at. You know, again, we're not going to win any awards necessarily for being the greatest pilot ever, but this is a good middle ground where you're not a hack, but you're, you're probably missing some specific steps. Now, again, if you're following a checklist, and you can find checklists where they'll basically have you do things that you can't actually do in the plane... Um, you know, you'll be you'll be talking about various uh, checklists that you talk to your auto to, to your um, co-pilot with, and so forth. And then you're getting yourself ready. You know, getting your instruments set. So we need our proper barometric pressure, which we're able to get from the airport. Again, I'll explain that in other videos of how you do that, how you get ready to fly, how you get your flight plan together, pick your route, so forth and so on. And then that will show you how to do those things. But, you know, you'll notice as I change these numbers, you know, the, the altitude changes. So it's important that you have, you know, things set appropriately to what the, the weather is. Uh, otherwise, you're potentially going to have things set in a way you don't want. But at this point, you've got a plane that's running as you can hear. Uh, you know, clearly we have lights on, we have lights inside. This plane is now at the opposite end of cold and dark. It is ready to go. So that, in a quick nutshell, is what you would do. Now again, if you're in an airliner, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. You're going to have a bunch of switches and things up here in a Airbus or a Boeing, for example. Um, you know, or a McDonnell Douglas in an MD aircraft, Mad Dog, as they are, are known in the community. Uh, you know, but, but the switches in general and the things you're looking for are going to be similar. You know, we didn't have to find any fuel pumps here in the CJ-4, for example. You know, those are operational and, and everything is working per you know, the default. But if you look around, you know, there are things here like fuel transfer and whether you want to move fuel around or not and hydraulic shutoffs and things. But, you know, this plane, for the most part, things are, are ready to go, you know, to begin with. You know, the other thing you, you may end up playing with is, you know, you may change the range. So let's say, you know, I, I want it 50 to 100 miles instead of, you know, the, the default that the plane came in, which I think was the 5 to 10. And once again, you're just, you can look for information, but your goal as a pilot is to get familiar with your aircraft. I'm probably going to say that in every uh, video lesson, because again, I don't know what people are going to consume or not. Uh, you, you do not, you're not going to have as much fun if you just jump in like any regular video game and just give it a whirl. That's not really how Flight Sim works. That's not how you're going to enjoy it. And if you're trying to do it in a pl in kind of a multiplayer thing, something like that Sim or so forth, where you're flying with other people, it's going to frustrate everybody around you as well if you don't know what you're doing. So you're going to want to get yourself comfortable, but the benefit of Flight Sim is, you know, you can do all this on your own in your own session and take as long as you want. If it takes you weeks, if it takes you months, that's fine. You know, and the benefit if you haven't seen the pattern video, you know, as, as I called it, you know, tiny flights that that let you practice pretty much everything. Like you can do this, you can even do this part as part of pattern work. Start off the runway. Don't start on the runway when you spawn in. You'll be cold and dark. You can then go through getting the plane ready, and then you go uh, and take off and do your pattern work and, and practice your flight techniques and your, your takeoffs and your landings and all those pieces. And then, 
you know, do it again. Come in, do cold and dark. You know, there's also shutdown checklists. Obviously, you'll, you, you're basically doing the opposite. Um, you know, there's things you'd normally do in a plane to, to get things set so that if another pilot came in. But, you know, if you're flying something smaller, I don't know that a CJ-4 would be considered smaller because this might be a corporate jet or something else. So, but you might still have other pilots, but if it's just your plane, you know, maybe you don't set the flaps up, although there's probably some benefit to putting the flaps back in their normal position so that they're not exposed to the elements. You know, even as a non-aviator, um, I may be entirely wrong, but in, in my own logic, like, things make sense if I think about it. Like, if I owned a plane and I spent tens of thousands of dollars on it, I'd want to take care of it. I'd obviously certainly have read the manual and so forth, and I'm sure the manufacturer explains when the plane's not in use, this is how they suggest you configure the controls in the cockpit and so forth. You know, but shutdown's less important, I guess, in, in flight sim, because unless you're really wanting to go through that whole process, most people will land, they'll taxi to the, they'll taxi to the ramp or to the terminal, and, you know, maybe shut down the engines and so forth, especially if you're using any kind of software that's tracking your flight. That's usually the minimum you need. Uh, it's either setting your parking brake or turning off your engines. Uh, sometimes it's both. It just depends what you're using. You know, but you can do that anywhere in the airport. But if you do it semi-appropriately, you'll come back to something like this, and then, you, you know, you'll flip these up, press the button again, they'll go from run to stop, the engines will wind down in a few seconds and your flight is over. And most people then go, don't go through all the steps of shutting everything down and, and getting it there. Now the other piece of that that I'll talk about in relation to cold and dark, let's say you're flying an airliner or whatever. You know, I've, I've talked to folks, you know, had chats either on Discord or whatever with, you know, actual pilots and, and other people who fly. You know, those, those planes don't really exist in a cold and dark state unless you're a mechanic or something like when you're getting into a plane that has just arrived from somewhere and you're a new flight crew and the other flight crew has gotten off that plane is running on the apron to some degree it's going to have power you're going to be getting in in kind of a, a mid state so you do need to understand what the controls are you need to go through your checklist make sure you're not missing things because the last thing you want in a plane is suddenly something that you can't fly and you're panicking because you're trying to climb at 2,000 feet and suddenly things are failing and you're losing the ability to climb and now you've got seconds before you go careening back to earth. You know, it's the, the, the stakes are certainly higher. You know, this is always the challenge in trying to explain flight sim to folks is, you know, everything's interconnected. I mean, at the end of the day, for it all to work and for you to enjoy it ultimately, you're going to have to learn all the things and probably more that, that I put out there. But for now, we've gotten you out of the cold and dark state. We've given you a little bit of color around that. So thanks for sticking through my additional information there. But as always, um, if you've enjoyed this, haven't dropped a like, please consider doing that. It'll help get these things in front of other people, maybe other folks who are also non-aviators who are intrigued about flight sim and want to learn about it uh, you know it'll it'll show folks that this is available the more people that like it and if you're not a subscriber please consider doing that and with this series as i've always said if there are things you're stuck on and you're you're kind of already in your journey but you're like oh i just wish i understood this better uh, drop me a note in in any of the videos on the series and say hey can you do a video on this or what do I do here and you know maybe it'll be a short answer and I'll just respond in the comments or it'll prompt me to hey I'm gonna go do a video about that because I've got a viewer who wants to see it there's not a magic sequence I'm going through these um, I'm kinda thinking of alright what, what's something I haven't covered that would be helpful uh, so um, you know, anything you, anything you are curious about or want to understand more about, let me know. I think I've got enough of an understanding of a flight simulation at this point that I can certainly give you a decent understanding of whatever topic it is to get you where you need to be. 
And if it's something I really don't understand, hey, it'll give me an opportunity to go off and do some research and, and learn it myself as well. And so it, it helps everybody out. But with that, I will see you next time.